Hey everyone, Glitch here, and welcome back to Act 5. I'm down here in the beautiful SoCal desert, exploring, doing uh, drone flying, mountain biking, and all kinds of other fun stuff. But let's take you on a little bit of an adventure talking about more solar power, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here, and welcome back to Hack 5. In a couple of previous videos, we've talked about off-grid power and powering things on solar, batteries, and so on. We made a DOI battery bank using some old hoverboard batteries. In another video, we actually talked about mounting solar panels to the roof of this van I'm currently in. In this video, we're going to be expanding on that ladder bit. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the AC200 battery unit I had and why that wasn't quite good enough and what I'm currently using. So let's get started. So this is the Blue Eddy AC200. It's a battery bank that is designed to be an all-in-one integrated system. It's got 700 watts of solar input, a 2000 watt inverter, and many other cool features. It's approximately 1.7 kilowatt hours of capacity, and they have a new model that you can get that's two kilowatt hours. Now, this isn't sponsored. I picked this thing up on the Indiegogo back in July. For the price I got it for, it's a pretty good unit. Now, this isn't going to be an all-inclusive review or anything of the sort. It's just a quick overview of this unit's capabilities. Originally, I got this unit so that I could use it in my Ford Transit Connect I picked up not uh, long before. That was going to be my van life build. However, one thing led to another, and now I have a much larger Sprinter. With a much larger Sprinter comes more appliances, more electricity draw, lighting, and so on. So, I was still keen to give this AC200 a go, and find out if it was going to be a good enough drop-in system. So I built a shelf for it under my cabinet that the camera's currently sitting on, wired everything up, had a converter from the front of the van going to the back of the van, supplying power to it whenever I drove, and I used it. Now for the period I used it the most, it, I was up in the PNW with very low solar power and it mostly was getting my energy from driving around and occasionally plugging into a wall outlet when I had one available. The system worked, however, I would get about a day or a day and a half of runtime. Ultimately, I traced this down to a few, I don't want to necessarily call them faults, but for van lifers, they're going to be big deal breakers on a system like this. The AC200 has a really high standby draw, measured upwards of 20 to 25 watts. That's with the inverter off and only running DC appliances. Now, one of the allures of DC appliances is they don't have a standby draw as such. You don't have an inverter constantly running that needs to be constantly on just to keep your lights on. That can run direc directly on the battery. However, the AC200 has a 56 volt battery in it, and it has to regulate that down to 12 volts. The process of regulating that down is relatively efficient, but it still has quite a high standby draw. Then you add on the control electronics, the solar, and all of this, and the fact that this was an early bird unit and they might have fixed some things. I had a pretty high standby draw that over the course of 12, 24 hours made up a substantial portion of the capacity of the battery unit. So while I had 1.7 kilowatt hours to work with, in reality, I could use about 900 to 1,000 watt hours of that over the course of a 24 hour period, 36 hour period, somewhere in there. While I was getting some solar in, it wasn't even enough to offset the idle standby draw of my appliances and my day-to-day -day usage. So ultimately, without driving or without a wall outlet, I wasn't self-sufficient. So where does that put us? Well, I put an AGM system. Now, AGM is a type of lead-acid battery. It stands for absorb glass mat. This basically means that these cells won't leak. Now, AGMs are cool because all the liquid is contained within, well, glass mats. It's absorbed in glass mats, hence the name. And this allows them to be mounted sideways, which is really good for space savings. Now, make sure to check with your manufacturer. I checked with Sun Extender on these packs to make sure that they were cool to be side mounted, and they were. This saved a good six to eight inches of my garage space, or the area under my bed I use for utility things. I have 325 amp hours of AGMs, and this correlates to roughly four kilowatt hours, so we're off to a great start on capacity. This gives us over double that of the AC200. However, it tends to feel like a lot more, and I'll get to why in just a moment. Now, you might be asking why I didn't go with lithium. Well, I intend to. However, the AGMs were already part of this van when I got it. I removed them to try the AC200. It didn't work out, so ultimately I ended up putting the AGMs back. However, the stock charge controller was a very large, relatively inefficient unit that was 
It's still a good unit by today's standards. It's the TriStar MPPT 45 amp charge controller. However, I wanted something a little more compact because I was trying to save space and ultimately a 45 amp charge controller is excessive. Furthermore, it was going to be mounted in a box in the back, so I didn't want to have to get in the garage just to check my power. I went with the Victron Smart Solar 100 by 30. This is a 100 volt input, 30 amp output charge controller. It's a pretty nice unit. Originally, I had bought a 100 by 15, thinking it was 100 volts input, 15 amp solar input, but it was actually only 15 amps battery output, and that would put me at about 130 to 150 watts. So, it wasn't quite enough. Now, I got the 30 amp unit, installed it, and I could actually use this really cool app to check the solar input and the battery state. Furthermore, Victron makes some other cool tech, and that is the BMV smart meter. First off, I get this neat little meter here that can be mounted in a panel, and it shows me some basic stats like how long I'll go until whatever capacity I set. I have it currently set for 25%, so I have over 200 hours until I get to 25%. It will also keep track of how many amp hours you have used and it will negate that with the solar you have coming in. So you have a running tally of how much power you've used. There's a few other cool stats it gives you, but those are the important ones. The neat thing is it also has Bluetooth and I can actually get trends and history of my consumed power, power generated, and so on. It's a really neat piece of kit and I love this thing. I've been checking it multiple times a day even though I didn't have to, the amount of power I'm generating right now far exceeds that of the AC200. Part of that's because I'm down in the desert and not in the PNW, so I might be cheating a little. However, it's also just generally a more efficient charge controller than that in the AC200. Its MPPT tracking is much quicker, and its power conversion is also much quicker because it's not boosting the solar voltage up, it's actually bucking it down, and that's generally a more efficient process. Now, the inverter I currently have is a 1700 watt unit, modified sine wave, and I've actually run into a couple of issues with that, so in a future video, we'll be talking about upgrading it. It's nothing special, it gets the job done for now. Back to the power meter, it has a really cool current shunt unit that goes in line with the battery. Now, this goes directly on the negative terminal. The only thing that should be behind it is a fuse. Everything going in and out of the battery bank goes on the load side of it. That means your chargers, whether that's from your alternator or solar power coming in. And this way it can track all the power coming in and going out of the system. Now all of my appliances go through a 12 bay fuse block. This is a really neat piece of kit. If a fuse blows, a light comes on next to it so you know which one blew. Now I couldn't fit the cover back over this because the cables I have going to it are much too large and they're at a right angle and the cover wasn't designed for it. However, this, since the box is all sealed up, I'm not too worried about that. Now this new system's been working really well for me. In the evenings, after it gets dark, I will actually start using power. Shocker, not generating anything because the sun's not there. The new system works pretty well. Uh, I've only gotten down to 89% capacity at my lowest. I've used about 35, 40 amp hours. And while I'm down here in the desert, I easily generate enough to have it fully charged by before noon, I, uh, before 11 o'clock most days. Now this covers running my monitor, charging my cameras, my phone, drone batteries, even an electric bike battery. More on that in a future video. My lighting is super efficient, and so I've not gone below 89% battery. So currently, at least down here in the desert, I am power positive. I don't have to worry about running out of power. Now, when I get back up to the PNW, I don't expect the story to be quite the same. Solar isn't quite as strong up there, and it rains a lot. So what I intend to do is install a battery isolator. This is a system that connects your charging bat or your starter battery and your alternator in line with that of your house battery. And whenever you're running your vehicle, it will charge it right up for you. A couple hours of driving a week will actually give me more than enough power to get through most of that week. I have a lot of upgrades planned for the future of this power system and the van as a whole. Let me know what you think of my current system and what you think I could improve or any suggestions or tricks you might have. Thank you all for watching. I've been Glitch. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.